So today in the garden, we're gonna be talking about very important things to know about tomato plants before you start growing tomatoes. Now there's really a lot of things you need to consider when you're growing tomato plants. But one thing that I learned this year that really helped me understand how to take care of the different varieties of tomato plants is understanding the difference between determinate tomatoes and indeterminate tomatoes. And there's actually a new third kind of category that's called dwarf interdeterminate. Dwarf interdeterminate tomatoes. I happen to have all three of them. I happen to have all three of them, so I'm gonna kind of walk you through the different kind of plants and how I'm sort of thinking about caring for them. So I've got four tomato plants. This one right here is an heirloom brandy wine interdeterminate tomato plant. Right here I have two dwarf interdeterminate cherry tomato plants. And I've actually been pruning them kind of differently to see the difference between the two. This is a determinate tomato plant. As you can see, it's much smaller. And as the name implies, it'll only grow to a predetermined size and it'll all sort of begin to fruit at once, and then once it's done fruiting, it's sort of done for the year. I actually had my first tomato from this plant, and it was actually mealy. It wasn't very good, and I wonder it's because this one doesn't get as much sun throughout the day than my other plants do. As you can see, they're already sunny. So this is one dwarf in a interdeterminate cherry tomato plant that I have not really pruned that much. And then I have another one about the same size and age that I pruned the bottom leaves for. And then my brandy one I have not really touched, so maybe I can kind of show you how I would approach it. Before we talk about how to care for these plants, we need to talk about the anatomy of a tomato plant. Whether it's determinate or, inter in or indeterminate, it's all the kind of the same elements of the plant that you need to consider. So let's go through that really quickly before we talk about how to care for it. So let's walk you through my Brandywine indeterminate heirloom tomato plant. And it starts off with the main stem. You have a main stem that kind of goes up. And then from this main stem, you have these big sun leaves that sort of jet off the main stem at 90 degrees. These are what's gonna capture the sun, create photosynthesis, and sort of give the plant energy to grow. And then you have what these are called suckers. These guys kind of grow out of the joint of the sun leaf and the main stem, and these actually grow into totally new tomato plants. But what they do is they suck energy out of a main stem. So you could potentially get more fruit if you let the suckers grow, but they might kind of mature and grow at a slower rate. And then of course, this is the cherry tomato plant, you have fruit clusters. I don't have any fruit clusters on my heirloom tomato plant yet. And so I've never grown an heirloom tomato before, so I'm wondering if it matures later or it fruits later. I'm not quite sure, but I'm just going with it. This is something I'm learning more about. These are much sort of easier to manage and maintain so far in my experience. So here is the main thing about an indeterminate tomato. A tomato is a vine essentially, and this is gonna grow wildly. This is going to keep growing as long as the conditions allow. It's gonna get real tall and it will continue to fruit for as long as it's growing. Because it's wild, it can get sort of unwieldy and its growth needs to sort of be guided. And so one way these will be grown is they cut the suckers off and they grow up one main stem. And what that does is it sort of creates a, a much narrower growing space. So if you were to grow a lot of these, then you could just grow up narrowly up one stem and fit many in a row, as opposed to letting it grow wild and it sort of will really get crazy. I mean, this 
stems will branch out everywhere and it'll become like a huge wild bush that you can't really control. So a lot of times people will, you'll take these guys off. These are the suckers. That's a sucker right there. That's a sucker right there. You wanna always take bottom leaves off of tomato plants. You do not want the soil to be splashing up on the leaves. That's how you get disease. When you see this yellowing of the leaves down here, it's a lot of the times the soil splashing up on the leaves and creating a disease. So by cutting off the bottom leaves, you're creating airflow and like a disease barrier essentially. And what we do when we're pruning, like say pruning the suckers out, we're basically focusing energy away from creating leaves and plants and focusing it in one stem to create a strong main stem and to focus on fruit production. The plant wants to produce fruit because the fruit is going to have seeds in them and that's gonna reproduce. So the goal of the plant is to make fruit. Now this is the de determinant plant. It's gonna just grow to a predetermined size and fruit once and then it's gonna be done. So with a plant like this, we don't want to prune the suckers because then that's gonna grow more fruit. So if you see suckers on a determinant tomato plant, let them go because that's just gonna be more production for you as opposed to letting this kind of fruit once and then die off. Even though this is kind of small, I think it's a little bit stunted in its growth, but the determinant plants, as you see, will grow bushier. So that's sort of a consideration you wanna make depending on the size and plot of your little garden. Now here we have my dwarf indeterminate cherry tomato plants. And what that means is that they basically are the best of both worlds. It's not gonna grow wildly, but what will happen is the fruit will keep producing throughout the year. And so just like the determinant plants, we do not want to prune suckers. We wanna let those suckers grow out into new leaves. I'm going to, I'm gonna cut the suckers off here, where as on this plant, I'm gonna let them go. And that's a huge difference you need to understand when you're gonna grow tomatoes if you wanna maximize your yield and get the most out of it. So now when we take care of tomato plants, we're really kind of talking about pruning. It's for productivity, to grow more fruit, and to prevent disease. The idea behind preventing disease is by creating airflow inside the plant. We don't want a lot of leaves bunched up in here. They get wet, they stick to each other, and they kind of get diseased. And soil splatters up and then it's a very quick way to to ruin your plant and if you see any signs of a disease yellowing of the leaves or anything get you got to get rid of them otherwise they'll make their way up to the plant and really cause problems so this one i'm it was kind of an experiment so i'm gonna i wanted to see if i let this alone and then i prune this if i was going to get more fruit from it and the fruit on the prune plant is performing much better and, and fruiting faster than the one that I didn't. So, as I said, you don't want to really prune suckers from a dwarf de indeterminate, which is for all intents and purposes a, a determinate plant. We treat it the same way as we would a determinate plant. I might feel a little bit better about if this is just a sunleaf, I might cut that off and focus growth to these fruit clusters. I see a little bit of yellowing of the leaves here. This doesn't look like a great kind of leaf set, and it's just a sun leaf. And if a sucker grows out from its little uh, joint here, then I'll let that go. But I want to get rid of this. Now, I actually cut this little growth off on this plant. There was one growing here, and I actually put it in water, and as you can see, Tomato vines will grow roots if in the right conditions. So I basically just clone this cherry tomato plant. I can then replant this and it'll grow into its own new thing. And uh, actually one of the suckers from my brandy wine plant fell off too. So I'm giving that the same treatment. Just put it in water for a few days, leave it inside by a window. And once you see the, the roots start to form, then you can plant it in soil. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight clusters on the one that I didn't prune. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And they're much bigger and more developed. And I have more flowers growing too. So, so basically my strategy for the indeterminate 
dwarf plants or the determinant is to cut the leaves up to the point when they start to fruit and then let it go wild up at the top. So you have nice airflow, but then you have leaves up here that's protecting the fruit from the sun. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. And then when I, I kind of go in and I'm, I'm looking for discoloration of leaves, I'll go in and I'll have a little snippers here and I'll just cut the leaves off. Otherwise, everything that's healthy, I'm gonna leave and I'm gonna look for aphids and insects. And what I do is I sort of like to go underneath the plant and you can sort of use the sun to kind of expose things that are underneath the leaves, little creatures. And if I see a little aphid or something, I'll just remove it from my hand or just squash it with uh, the leaves. So with this plan, I wanna take some of these bottom leaves off and then I'm gonna remove these suckers. And then I'm gonna put a big, like eight foot stake in the ground and I'm gonna start to train this plant to grow upwards. It's gonna get much heavier and it's gonna start to lean over. So having a huge stake is gonna work. And that talks about putting a cage versus a stake versus a trellis. This could grow up a trellis really nicely or a stake, but a cage is probably gonna be not enough support. And eventually the leaves are gonna start to fall over. Cages for dwarfs and determinate plants, I think uh, are a really good idea. Staking and trellising wild indeterminate ones, I think are a good one. But it also depends if you're going single stake. I actually don't see a lot of fruit growing. So instead of cutting some of these suckers off, I actually might leave one and just try and get as much fruit from this guy as I can. Because I don't see flowers forming. I don't see any flower clusters. And usually they form off of the main stem. So I'm keeping an eye out. If anyone has any advice for me about heirloom tomatoes and why it might not be flowering at all or creating fruit clusters, let me know. But I'm just gonna go through and trim this guy up. I know it looks like a lot, but I'm confident that these top flowers that are coming in are gonna be enough to suck in the sun and give the plant energy to grow. It also allows you to interplant in the same pot. Marigolds are great to plant in a garden. They kind of give off a, a scent that confuses the insects. So you could throw some beautiful flowers into the same bed. They're gonna kind of work together in harmony, which you always want in your garden. So right now I can run these up, a st up these bamboo stakes, but I actually have this long stake. It's gonna go in the ground like that. I basically just dug up a deep hole in the grass next to the pot. You could probably put it in the same potter if you do it early enough. Right now the roots have sort of grown and I don't wanna damage them inside there. So there should be plenty of height. So I'm just going to bang that into the ground, bury it back up, and then I can start to run the plant up the stake. But I'm not gonna do that yet, because it's actually kind of ugly and uh, I wanna maintain a nice looking garden as long as possible. Maybe that's a mistake, but we'll learn. This is me learning as much as I can about growing and gardening and then sharing it with you guys. So. As always, I'll leave links down to people who I've been really inspired by and following and learning from, but this is sort of me in the process of learning how to do all of this stuff. I believe as a, as a cook, you need a, a better, closer relationship to the food, and by growing your own food, it's just really the answer if you cook. And you wanna have the best stuff at all times, right? Am I right? I don't think I'm alone in that desire. So now I'm just gonna plant my clone tomato plant into a little potter. We're gonna start growing another cherry tomato. So to the pot I add some organic potting soil and some organic compost and this 5105 fertilizer. When you buy fertilizer, you always see those three numbers. The first one means nitrogen, the second is phosphorus, and the third is potassium. So I add that, top it off with a little potting soil, and then I'll take that propagated tomato I'll use a gardening tool and scoop aside some of that soil and gently add 
the tomato plant root down into the soil. And then I'll just give it a good soaking, help those roots get established into the soil. And there you have it, a cloned cherry tomato plant. Make sure you toss any of the discolored leaves or diseased leaves either off the property or into a, a landscape bag. Now I'm gonna just lightly tie up some of my tomato plants to the stakes, give them a little bit of structure. I just kind of sort of tie a knot to the bamboo, wrap it around kind of the opposite tomato branch that I want to support, just making sure that I don't strangle the branches and that I'm giving them enough space to grow. There's lots of ways to do this. My method will likely evolve. By no means is this the best way of doing it. It's just how I'm doing it right now. So that's basically what I know so far about tomatoes. If I said anything wrong, please correct me, fact check me down in the comments. So uh, that's it for today in the garden. I hope you learned some important things about tomatoes, especially if you're growing them. I never really had taken the time to learn that stuff in the past, so I decided to dive in deep this year and uh, that's what I know right now. And when I know more, I promise I'll share it with you. I hope you enjoy the gardening videos. For me as a cook, it's important to both know where your food comes from and control the quality of it whenever you can. So I'm really adamant about you guys trying to grow food, even in a small space, even if it's one container. I started it with one plant and this year I kind of grew into many plants. So you'll get the bug, I promise. Just keep trying. The more you know about cooking, the better you are. The more you know about gardening, the better you become. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.